Sam Adi from Jack Interventions, and uh, I'm at Emory University. And uh, we're very delighted here to have with us at the CVN studio uh, Dr. David Kanzari, who's the uh, Director of Interventional Cardiology at uh, Piedmont Heart Institute in, Atl in Atlanta. And uh, David has a very interesting paper in the upcoming issue of Jack Interventions entitled, Do Antiplatelet Therapy Duration and Clinical Outcomes Following Treatment with Zorolimus Eluting Stents? Um, so let me uh, ask you, David, uh, tell us a little bit about the design of this uh, very interesting study and uh, what your methodology was. Thank you, Habib. So in the Endeavor Clinical Trials Program, we pulled all of the key registration trials involving the Endeavor stent. Most of these were randomized trials, either in comparison to a bare metal stent or to alternative first-generation drug-eluting stents. And among these uh, 2,100 patients approximately, we followed their three-year outcomes according to their adherence to both aspirin and thenopyridine therapy. Specifically, the Endeavor program was the first of the newer ad advanced generation drug-eluting stent programs to more carefully ascertain adherence to both aspirin and thenopyridine therapy given the changing in changes in prescription patterns, given the concerns over the risks of late and very late stent thrombosis. And what we identified is that against the background of very favorable safety outcomes of cardiovascular death, of myocardial infarction, of stent thrombosis, and even stroke, we found that whether patients stopped, stopped thenopyridine therapy against the background of maintaining aspirin treatment, if they stopped therapy at six months, at 12 months, or if they even continued dual antiplatelet therapy for two years, their three-year three outcomes of those composite of outcomes like stent thrombosis and cardiovascular death and myocardial infarction did not statistically vary, suggesting that those patients who were adherent after Endeavor treatment to six months of dual antiplatelet therapy fared just as well with regard to safety outcomes over late-term follow-up as patients who were adherent to dual antiplatelet therapy for one year or even two years. Okay, so, um, so, so methodologically you took patients who were on dual antiplatelet therapy for over six months, uh, but less than 12 months, and compared them to between 12 and 24 and over 24 months, those three cohorts? That, that's exactly right. And in particular, you raised two important caveats. One is that this is a study of adherence to both aspirin and thenopyridine therapy. Mm -hmm. This is not a study of stopping both antiplatelet right. agents at any time point. We know that that portends a heightened risk for patients uh, no matter what type of stent they've mm -hmm. received. Secondly, we excluded patients who in the first six months had either prematurely stopped antiplatelet therapy, who had an inter intervening event such as a myocardial infarction or a repeat revascularization in which there may be a, a very solid clinical ground to continue antiplatelet therapy longer. And similarly, we excluded patients who had a major bleeding event within the first six months as well for whom there might again be a clinical rationale to stop antiplatelet treatment. Okay. So um, do you, so to summarize then the, the primary findings of your study is whether patients were on therapy for just six months or up to two years, you found similar cardiovascular outcomes, including stent thrombosis and overall cardiovascular outcomes. That's correct. A principal driver today in mm -hmm. clinical practice, of course, after DES revascularization is the concerns of late and very late stent thrombosis. Mm -hmm. We have guidelines that we'll talk about are largely based on consensus opinion, mm -hmm. and in part some trials outside of the realm of DES revascularization that have suggested that longer is better. But on the other hand, more recent observational studies and even two large randomized trials have challenged this notion that there is a perceived mandate of 12 months or if not a lifetime commitment to dual antiplatelet therapy after DES revascularization. So this again is one of those studies that would challenge that, at least specific to this type of drug eluting stent, that the patients who stopped thenopyridine therapy at six months, and again, this was at their discretion at the physician's discretion, the exact reasons why we don't know, but they did just as well over late term as those patients who, who took dual antiplatelet therapy for longer periods. And I think that's a good point because um, obviously because it was at the physician's discretion, one of the things you found was that the groups were not identical and you adjusted for them. For instance, those patients yes. that were on longer dual antiplatelet therapy tended to have more risk factors and 
other few if any studies uh, to your point have the fidelity to capture those details that are so common and important to us but necessarily don't necessarily rather tell us why patients stopped antiplatelet therapy so we performed a propensity score adjustment model mm -hmm. uh, to help balance for as many clinical and angiographic characteristics as possible. So is it fair to say that for a simple uh, percutaneous intervention with zotulinumus eluding stents uh, based on the study, you would advocate only six months of dual antiplatelet therapy, or do you think that would be too preliminary and these are hypothesis generating data? Well, I'll give you maybe two answers to that. Right. One uh, is, to begin with, this study, of course, has limitations. This was a retrospective observational analysis of a database that, albeit large, with over 2,100 patients, certainly isn't of sufficient sample size to make definitive conclusions uh, with regard to hard safety endpoints like death, like myocardial infarction, or even outcomes like stent thrombosis. But on the other hand, they are highly suggestive. And they are also very consistent with a larger and yet growing body of evidence, both observational and randomized data, that is suggesting that longer adherence to dual antiplatelet therapy, and in particular for continuing dual antiplatelet therapy for six to 12, beyond six to 12 months, mm -hmm. is not necessarily reducing those events. It's challenged the guidelines recommendations that patients should receive at least 12 months of dual antiplatelet therapy. So my opinion, though, is that based on these data, in parallel with a collection of uh, additional emerging data, the recent Prodigy trial being mm -hmm. one example of this, a randomized trial suggesting no benefit for 24 months versus six months, that again, collectively, these data might challenge the existing guidelines in that 12 months of dual antiplatelet therapy, while it may be appropriate for many patients, shouldn't necessarily be considered an absolute contraindication for a patient to receive the potential benefits of drug eluting stents. Well, thank you very much. And this sort of highlights the importance of more individual-oriented patient-specific therapies. And people have talked about intravascular imaging or other techniques, try to select those patients that can receive shorter-term dual antiplatelet therapy. But with that, David, we look forward to your future leadership and work in this field. Thanks, Abhi.